And we're live. Welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome, gentlemen, to the Horasis Education Panel, Catching Up Lost Education uh, Time After COVID. I'm Zhen Yuan, partner at Joy V Education. And today we have a panel of very esteemed and seasoned um, educators and education professionals to discuss the impacts of COVID on education as well as other education related topics. And without further ado, I will go ahead and quickly introduce the uh, esteemed speakers and fire off the first initial uh, open the question. And then afterwards, we go around and so that each speaker can go ahead and uh, speak at length about his perspectives on different matters. And hopefully we can have a very uh, interactive session. Uh, we also want to make sure that each speaker can have a chance to really, really speak at length. And afterwards, we'll have uh, maybe leave about uh, some time for the audience questions as well. And hopefully we can do, also do a group, group selfie at the very end of the session. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and fire off the uh, introductions. Uh, first, we have um, just alphabetically from uh, surname, uh, Sir George uh, Berwick. Uh, Sir George Berwick um, is uh, currently the chairman of Olivi International in the UK. He is an executive coach in Quebec and the UK. He publishes a weekly journal, which has a global leadership. Uh, formerly, Sir Berwick has been um, a teacher and then a head te teacher for 20 years. His areas of expertise range from effective knowledge management approach to school um, school improvement. He was uh, also visiting professor at Institute of Education, University College London, from 2011 to 2017. He was awarded CBE in 2008 and knighthood um, in 2013. Next, uh, we have uh, Mr. Oleg uh, Drozikdorf, who is uh, with us. Um, Oleg, would you um, just let me invite you to the uh, to the stage? Um, please uh, kindly accept the invitation. It's a little bit slow on um, the um, invitation, but uh, once you accept the invitation, I um, appreciate if you can kind of come up. Um, some introductions. Uh, Mr. Oleg is the president of the Kirchhoff School of Architecture in Ukraine. He graduated from uh, the Kirchhoff National University of Civil Engineering and Architecture. In 1997, he created uh, Drozdov and Partners, which is currently one of the best known architectural offices in Ukraine. Uh, some of the most remarkable build projects are uh, Alof Hotel in Kiev, as well as commercial and office complexes in Av Plaza and Platon Plaza in the central part of Kirchhoff. Welcome, uh, uh, Mr. Oleg, uh, Oleg uh, Drozdov, as well. And uh, next, we have um, alphabetically by surname Professor Michele Notori. Uh, prof uh, Michele, uh, Professor uh, Notori, Mi Michele Notori is Professor in Technology Enhanced education at the University of Teacher Education in Bern, Switzerland, and the University of Hong Kong. His research focus is in computer-supported collaborative learning, technology-enhanced project-based learning, wearable computing, and learning using computer-mediated reality. He was the founding president of the One Laptop to Child organization in Switzerland and founding member of Neoway.org, Wisdom Accelerator for Youth. He runs and participates in different initiatives enabling and enhancing learning using technologies in remote areas of the world. Welcome, uh, Professor Mutari. Uh, next, we have uh, Professor uh, Daniele Shiro. Uh, professor Daniele Shiro is an associate professor of political economy at the Department of Economics at the University of Messina. He completed graduate level uh, studies at Cambridge and Yale universities. His research currently concerns growth firms, innovation, and the digital economy. Welcome, Professor uh, Shiro. Oh, great. Mr. Oleg, welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, sir. And finally, we have um, Dr. Uh, Manfred Zuck. Uh, Dr. Manfred Zuck is the Vice President uh, of External Affairs and International Relations at Concordia University of Edmonton, aka CUE. He moved from Brazil to Canada, where he has lived for um, 15 years and spent 10 years at the Concordia University of Edmonton, CUE, as VP. He oversees CUE's internationalization as well as outreaching units such as government relations, uh, advancement and community relations, Center for Chinese Studies, Extension and Cultural Engagement, Alumni Relations, alumni relations and all of CUE's tech centers for innovation industry. He has a master's and PhD from the University of Strasbourg, France, and worked in higher education in Brazil as well. So welcome, gentlemen. We have a wealth of knowledge and experience across various sectors and geographies in education. And so I'm going to go ahead and really just quickly fire off the first question, and then just you know hand it off to um, to speakers who like to uh, to to take this uh, one by one. So the, the question 
to start us off is, what are your observations on COVID-related disruptions to your institution, region, field, or education sector? And what have been some responses and solutions that you observed in efforts to catch up to or make up for these losses or disruptions to education? Would anyone like to, uh, to start? Shall I go first as it's an alphabetical yes, order and then we can, Jim, we can break it up afterwards. Yes. I think, well, let's start uh, realistically. The government took it very seriously that there was a, a loss immediately. And Ofsted recorded in 2021 considerable concerns about the loss of, of time right across the board. Um, and they appointed a czar in the UK to actually deal with it. And uh, he suggested that they spent £10 billion was required for catch up. A larger amount of that was to extend the school day into the summer and into the evenings. And also, interesting enough, was to move, as is happened in Quebec as well, uh, move towards coaching and providing more one-to-one -one teaching rather than depending on classwork. So in other words, the, the impact immediately people are perceiving as differentiated rather than an impact which is collective. And that's sort of one of the major themes. In other words, it's hit different groups differently with a different impact, especially socially, economically and diverse different units. And um, so that's where I'd like to start, really. So we had that price. And then, of course, we then come to the reality of the world that we've all talked about. The new Chancellor of Cheka decided to give them a billion, in which case the Tsar resigned. Interesting enough, the Tsar was the sub, uh, was the uh, deputy advisor on the latest UNESCO report as well. So, um it shows really where education, and we've been dealing with that ever since, really. And it's a combination. What One of the things that I'm interested in, which is interesting in schools, uh, is the fact that it has brought a lot more control into the school for the head teacher within the school, because they've had to implement school policy. But also the government's direct intervention in school has been a much higher level than we're used to. How that is let go will be very interesting as time goes because we're going to get innovation it's going to come from the grassroots as well as from the top so we're seeing a lot of legislation at the moment leveling up in in the uk doing things such as let's make sure that everyone attends school properly and there is a major concern about people missing um you know things so the final thing i'd just like to say about this as well from my point of view and my readers who are mainly head teachers and advisors our major concern is that whatever happens Three things should, should not happen. We should ensure, one, we've lost a lot of children. We need to know that all our children are seen, safe and supported. That's the first thing. Second thing is that we need to ensure that whatever we do doesn't make this divide that's a word, a verge now even bigger. So the ones who have suffered the most don't continue to suffer. That, that gap's closed. I think that's very important. And third, that we build on this the knowledge that we've learned about the effectiveness of certain interventions like IT, et cetera, during this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, really great insights around you know, needing to um, make sure that um, we need to build on knowledge, needing to ensure that there's not a divide and uh, making sure that not a lot is lost on children. Um, Manfred, would you like to uh, go next uh, in terms of, you know, I think George mentioned something about more about Quebec um, in Edmonton, how are things going? in there. In yes, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, yes, at my university here in Edmonton, in Alberta, uh, actually, in uh, when COVID started, we, um, the faculty actually took it uh, right away uh, uh, to their responsibility to jump into the online uh, modus, right? So it was in, in, in March 2020. From, from Friday, we went to Monday starting online. It was really, really something impressive. But uh, two years have passed, right? So we went back uh, to face-to-face -face or mixed and then back online again and with the waves. And uh, what I want to uh, talk about a little bit later is, is the mental health aspect. But um, uh, so what, what Concordia University of Edmonton here did is in 2020, we started working on um, what, we, what we learned from this uh, for the future education, a blended learning model. Where we can in where we can integrate some online aspects, uh, the positive aspects of that technology, uh, but not uh, at all replacing uh, the the face-to-face -face, 
uh, because we are we are social beings and social distancing is counterintuitive to humanity and we are feeling the toll of that and uh, but what I read is for instance in the school realm in Ontario um, uh, one of the uh, opposition parties there would like to introduce grade 13 that, that was once um, eliminated in the early 2000s uh, grade 13 to, to precisely catch up on these interesting ideas they would like to, to uh, so that the, the students learn more about personal finances uh, so that they learn more about civics and citizen engagement and all of the other tools that they need to, uh, that they have lost. So this is an interesting solution there that, that would be, uh, uh, in Alberta, we don't have this approach, but um, of course, um, tutoring, as it was already mentioned here, and then coaching uh, by telephone or online uh, have been, been done. But um, actually, the numbers, I have a report here from the U.S., the numbers of, uh, of the impact on the uh, life's uh, income and economy is quite big with the loss uh, of learning. But I think the, the most important, important aspect is the mental health aspect that I want to come back later here. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Any one um, of the uh, remaining gentlemen want to just go ahead and share your perspectives on uh, you know, disruptions from your region, sector, area. Oleg, I think you're on mute. Microphone. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Oleg Buzdo, uh, president of Kharkiv School of Architecture. And uh, our original approach was based on uh, material experience. And everything um, what we learned it was by testing, by by uh, making uh, by hands uh, all this stuff. And this is a transformation to the this online courses. It was a full disaster. And we try to uh, to find way how we could work with this materiality and online. And this is was quite um, challenging things. And we not really. Uh, have a deal uh, to that because to learn uh, to study architecture without this material experience and and physical um, uh, uh, physical interaction is mostly impossible. And I also understood that uh, there's a digital uh, there's a core transformation of voice and body to this. Um, digital language and, and, and translation back, it's losing a lot. But it is, but, and also it's brought enormous worldwide uh, new relations and we, we keep these uh, um, multi-layering uh, type of education and, and uh, this is, it, it works and this is, it will be our um, uh, foundation for years, I mean, for, for whole maybe system of education and, and curriculum but uh, but also um, yeah you are absolutely right it, it will be no way, a new way of how we organize our you know, kind of relations and maybe also to supporting students uh, for some kind of uh, consultancy and other things this is bring, brought so many new things absolutely thank you Oleg uh, for sharing it, it is certainly difficult you know without that interaction for architecture without you know, being physically there to see things uh, to begin with. Um, now so we move on to the professors um, from the educational level um, in, in the university level. Um, how have been the disruptions and what were some of the responses? Uh, would any one of the professors want to start? Maybe I jump in. Um, uh, actually, I'm teaching at the University of Teacher Education in Switzerland, which means that actually I had, we had an impact on our, on our level, the university level, but of course we are working together with a myriad of schools uh, and there they had the same issues by COVID, by the beginning of COVID, they had, as Manfred mentions, to change online from Friday to Monday, which had actually quite a big impact and for them the preparation was actually almost zero and we had to jump in first of all to fix our patches and then on the second, that means from we had one 24 hours for our online education and the, 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 the other 24 hours of the weekend to try to manage all the, 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 the answers or the questions from schools. How can we set up our teaching on primary, secondary school 
uh, online. So which means we had quite we were quite busy at that time, trying to give some insight about how education should go and should happen and what uh, tools they have. We are in a privileged uh, situation that in Switzerland the network coverage is quite good and um, the, the, also the coverage with uh, personal tools at, school, uh, at home is quite good. Nevertheless, we had a couple of, well, actually quite some families which had difficulties to deal with issues, technical issues and network issues, especially if families with different, several child, children which needed space to have several uh, sec sections, several classrooms at the same time and they didn't have seven computers at home, obviously, if they have so many children. So that was the thing, but it was like sort of the, the, the just in, uh, the worst case scenario and then what happens from the pedagogical point of view, what was actually not so good. Uh, what is the easiest way to, to teach when you teach online is just to provide information from A to B, that mean, which means the teachers start just providing like sort of lecturing and then the students have to, to solve homeworks and then come back on that. And of course, a lot of things were missing, as Manfred mentioned as well. We are social beings and without social interaction, there is no learning actually that takes place or the learning is very reduced to factual learning acquisition. So that means actually during this pandemic, what has been lost is really the capacity and the possibility, opportunity to learn really like sort of in a social way, to collaborate, to um, interact, to do projects together. And this has been, this is the thing that has, has been missing because this happens in a classroom at school usually. And of course there is like, like if you, now we look forward, what's the thing where we should catch up and try to really enhance that because now technology is there, it's accepted and we have the chance to use that to enhance our teaching capabilities, even if we have the chance. And fortunately, we have this chance again to meet at school again. So the thing is actually we could embroider the, 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 the way of, of, of collaboration using this new technology, which means bridging distances. And I don't talk just about distances from here to Ukraine or Russia or wherever, but I talk about not only geographical, but also social or, or, or temporal distances like we do here. We have a discussion and someone is in in the Philippines, someone is in Switzerland, the other one is in the UK. So these distances, which are also temporal distances, have been bridged. And I think this is a chance which should be grasped by educators and people who want to, uh, to go ahead with development of education and uh, to really foster the needs of the next century. We will have to deal with problems that we mentioned in the session before of we went live. We will need to, 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 to deal with problems which are really over our boundary of our community, which means we have to open up, we have to deal with social crises, we have to deal with climate crises, we have to deal with other crises which really don't stop, uh, or pandemic crises which don't stop at our borders. And there we need to have these skills developed, and this is our job, to train and to develop the skills of our children, so in order to, to empower them to face the problems they will have to solve now and in the future. Thank you, Michelle. And finally, um, Daniele, would you like to uh, give us your perspectives on uh, regarding the, the disruptions in, in particular in your institutional region? Thank you, Jim. Um, I want to remind you just uh, one figure. In uh, 12 months between 2020 and 2021, around the world, children, girls and boys have lost an average of 74 days of education in person, I mean, and more than a third of the global average uh, school day year of uh, 190 days. So, I mean, it was a big change uh, uh, when the uh, COVID uh, occurred. And um, now I talk about uh, my experience in my university. I remember at the beginning <laughs> was a mess because nobody expected this. And so we were not very organized, very much organized. Then, of course, we uh, organized a laptop in every classroom, uh, screen, big screen. And um, so we managed somehow to, to provide lectures and so on. Mm, what I noticed uh, from my experience, because uh, you see, I, I thought as a graduate student and undergraduate first year student. So the graduate students uh, who have, were big, uh, older and with more experience uh, in the university, more or less managed the, these uh, uh, online uh, teaching. 
the first year uh, undergraduate instead were in trouble because uh, because they were beginning their course and they didn't know how to you know they never had experience of university lectures uh, they were new at a, at the most of the uh, subjects that they were following and attending and so they really found themselves in trouble, in difficulties. So we provided some more tutorship uh, online and so on. What I mean is that I think uh, um, uh, for the experience, uh, we should have or um, have better uh, a better organization. But also, uh, saying giving online teaching means also that the professors, the teachers, must know how to manage online teaching, which is something different from in-person uh, lectures. So in, somehow you need some, uh, how can I say, some background, some knowledge in how to manage. Uh, about, just to finish, about digitaliz digitization of, uh, of the teaching, of course, uh, it's, it's a good, uh, can be uh, a good um, mean, a good instrument, but is a complementary, uh, must be complementary to in-person teaching because otherwise uh, the, 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 um, just the online teaching is not enough as we, 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 we experienced during this uh, pandemic. And just to finish, the first year students in 2020 then in, when they became second year, had again the same experience of online teaching. Third year, again. So these students really got very little in-person uh, teaching. And this is not very good for, uh, for the background and for the uh, uh, you know, uh, education of these people. And, and the last uh, conclusion is, uh, I think we will uh, understand better the effects of all these uh, uh, on, uh, uh, online teaching in a few years. So we can evaluate better what really uh, are the impact of this uh, experience. That's it. Thank you, Daniele. Yes, please, Matthew. Yeah, I would like to just talk about uh, what I read here on a report, McKinsey report here on on impact in sheer numbers, and then and then move to the other part that is more more uh, the human. Uh, for uh, I, I, we see that the K to twelve students uh, that are in the spectrum now in the U.S. Uh, will be losing a lifetime earnings of of, of uh, fifty five thousand uh, dollars. So so one point four percent for for white students, two point four. Uh, percent loss for black students, 2.1% loss for Hispanic students. Uh, by 2014, uh, 40, all these will be in the workforce and there will be a loss of $150 billion in GDP. Okay, so these are numbers of the losses, but uh, the most important, what I think, is that we are not, like Damaiso said, we are not thinking machines. We are feeling machines that think. So the most important for making up for the, for losses is is to to catch up on mental health programs. Uh, in the, before COVID uh, in Canada, mental health problems were um, present were pretty much in uh, with Canadian students. We had this at Concordia. We had a loss of a student by suicide, and then in 2017 we established a mental health strategy and framework. Um, we have been doing yearly mental health fundraising breakfast for the president and. We just had our last one in two, uh, two weeks ago. In the, two, in the, in the three years, uh, we, we raised $60,000 to enhance mental health programs. So uh, it, is, it is really important and the, 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 that, that this aspect is, is, uh, is uh, you know, taken into consideration. I mean, uh, of course, there is impact for the economy, for the income, but criminality, criminality has, has gone up here in, in our city, right? Uh, homelessness. Uh, so th this is the aspect of the social distancing, I think, that is contrary to our nature. Unless you're ill or you are retreating for some time, it is contrary to our nature. So um, uh, fostering activities that, that, that touch this emotional and the social is, is fundamental.
Thank you, Manfred. Um, so yeah, I mean, really good insights from all of you gentlemen. And uh, you know, we, we touched upon the need for mental health education support. Um, and then also the, the um, Michelle had mentioned that, you know, the importance of technology and George and um, Oleg had mentioned the importance of having that communication, the physical touch, making sure that there's no divide. And also Danelli had mentioned also the, you know, the importance of, you know, really close knit tutoring as we go through this, you know, very, very tough period where maybe online, online classes are great, but, you know, they're sometimes glitchy as well. And uh, I want, I want to uh, kind of go back to uh, actually something we've been discussing a little bit uh, actually before the official start of the, of the session. I think, uh, Michelle, you had mentioned uh, um, the uh, importance of, of business and how education business are really you know, connected, uh, connected and synergetic and how um, you know, business can really help the education sector, uh, especially through the pandemic and all that. You know, I'd love to hear some thoughts from, from, from I guess, uh, all of you in terms of um, how, um, how can business and the commercial sector help out in terms of improving um, education and also um, helping with these responses uh, to the education sector, especially you know, in, in post-pandemic and, and helping to alleviate these situations. Any thoughts? Well, maybe, uh, oh, well, Daniela, go ahead, please. Well, thank you so much. Uh, well, one thing is actually, you know, I think the role is not exactly the one you suggested. From my point of view, first of all, it's not, uh, of course, uh, business can, can give us some money to do things or can, can, can give us some sort of facilities to, to help out with uh, setting up education. But actually, uh, it's like a give and take. And I think the major role is uh, like also on our part that I think without education, no business. And that's one thing. So that's why it's like sort of like if you want to continue doing business, make sure that your people is educated. And that is something which is, has been taken on by the business as well. You know, they have all these programs. It's very relevant nowadays and even more in the future. So it's like not that, yeah, come on, business, please, we do whatever we want. We put our names, your names in our, and it's not like that. Actually, the important should be like, of course, we're working together. We're doing together that people can survive, that you can make also business, but they become also like human beings, which are uh, eager and able to think and to make take decisions, which also hopefully help to prevent major crises and not only just increase of GBT or whatever. That's that's the, the things we are, I think, hopefully all into. So that's maybe we take it from this side a bit. And of course, we help and they should help us. Of course, it's in the interest of everybody. I can jump in here if, if nobody else wants to jump in right now. Um, so at Concordia, we established um, three tech centers that I oversee uh, since 2016. And these tech centers, they have been uh, not quiet at all during the pandemic. So, so what happens is that we had a, an increase of students taking part of our innovation launchpad and launching their ideas and launching their businesses. So this was one thing here. So we have we a have, uh, few dozens of students who have been successful in receiving um, awards and, and, and grants from from uh, institution and government. Um, the, the other, at the other hand, we are also increasingly uh, cooperating with business and industry on campus with, with uh, research cooperation. Uh, students take part of, 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 uh, of, of uh, research that, that uh, a business and an industry is doing on our, in our lab, right? Uh, we have a special lab for industry partner, and this is a good thing. So businesses investing in back in education giving to the students a, a bigger um, spectrum of, of um, uh, experience. And also we have, um, we have a double degrees uh, now for a few years at Concordia that is not very common. Uh, you, can, you can, in five years, you can get, if you are in this program, the Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Management so that scientists can, can uh, learn how to manage their knowledge and their businesses as well. So I think that's, that's a good thing here. Um, shall I say uh, something? Yes, uh, you see, uh, COVID uh, pandemic uh, gave a big boost, a big push to the digital economy and so to the digital education. And uh, somehow uh, uh, education in business has benefited from this uh, uh, digital uh, teaching in some, and maybe has... Uh, 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 my friend said before, uh, 
there was a, also uh, some advances by uh, students who were mo very much inter interested in innovation, in setting up startups and so on. So, yes, there are also positive aspects of, uh, of what happened uh, during these years. Uh, not everything is negative. If we look at, for instance, the digital divide, uh, then uh, we understand that uh, uh, there was a, a pro there was a problem with uh, with the poor um, students, so with um, students coming from poor family and so on. But um, if we look at the digital education in business, maybe uh, there have been some benefit. Although, as I uh, we said before. Uh, the, uh, a, a teaching based only online is not sufficient, at least this is my opinion, and I think all of you agree on that. And um, so even if you are starting business or doing an MBA, whatever, uh, you need some in-person uh, contact and, and interaction, personal and social interaction because uh, really uh, it's fundamental. Also to understand how, uh, the people. For instance, I uh, last year I, I I gave most of the lectures in person. The the last one the at the end in December we had to move online. But since I have done all the lectures to these uh, student, graduate students. Uh, in person, then the online lectures were much easier in the sense that we know each other already and we can discuss uh, in, in an easy way uh, online because uh, there was already a, a personal, no, we, we know each other personally and so on. So I know who was uh, that, that girl, uh, that, that boy, uh, the, the character and so on. So this is important. And uh, just to finish, as I said before, uh, the, the teacher must uh, uh, learn how to teach online because it's something completely different. And of course, we we never learned, uh, we never went to school <laughs> and learned how to teach online. <laughs> but we must do it somehow in future. Okay. Thank you, Tinelli. And it's it's interesting. You, you again, you brought up the the. Uh, the points about uh, online education and how we're so dependent on things online at this point. Um, George or Oleg, um, what would we really just hear your thoughts in terms of how, you know, uh, from a um, perspective of executive coaching or architecture, um, have yeah. you uh, integrated like, online aspects? Yeah, I think so. Um, I have one of my backgrounds is I used to design IT systems. So, um, and, and it's been we've been trying many years for it to get a footprint. In. I was sent to the US in '93 with a conviction that it would take over. We'd all be sacked within as teachers within about five years. And of course, it's evolving. Um, the issue was quite interesting. Is one of the advantages it got was that most of the interventions put forward, the schools were given funds for, which was about coaching and one-to-one -one work, and particularly to deal with the mental health issue and to stop students being disconnected. We couldn't gear up in the time available. So most of the schools are sitting on a pot of cash. What they could do is buy IT equipment, which could be standardized across the system. So in a sense, the solution, yes, IT got a better hold on schools, but the real solution, you know, it's taken a quite a while to figure. The other thing I would like to say as well about this is what it did throw up, which it, where business comes in as well, is about the local ecosystem and how a school functions and what education is. Now, most people here are talking from a higher uh, education background. I'm talking from a grassroots school background. And during the pandemic, school ran soup kitchens. They ran home to school. They, you know, et cetera. They took on a massive a social role. If you look at the, the issues raised by Ofsted, our, our inspection service, you look at them, they're about family, wealth, uh, housing, and these all impact. And maybe one of the outcomes which would be a very positive outcome is that in fact we had an ecosystem local ecosystem which took in healthcare, which took in south care took in some it took business interests into account to establish an effective education system the isolation that you've been talking about in sixth form doesn't exist in in universities doesn't exist in schools schools are battling all the social economic factors around them and trying to counter them 
it might be helpful now if we actually joined it up and decided we were all fighting the same battle rather than having separate health service and a separate education service, et cetera, if we are actually going to solve some of the major problems which were made worse by the pandemic. Uh, thank you, George. It's really yeah. uh, enlightening to see a, a perspective from the the, the younger education um, mm -hmm. ages, which could be a little bit different from the from the university uh, level. Um, Oleg, uh, would you like to add uh, additional points to, uh, to to the discussion, maybe from your perspective? Yeah, probably? yeah, sure. In, in one hand, we we little bit uh, in some uh, in. Uh, all of us in some process of evolution, we're becoming much more digital creatures. And this is means like a new type of habitats. And if we go to online, um, online type of education, we are uh, becoming in quite bigger competition. I mean, in traditional schools becoming be much more competitive with an enormous number of, of different kind of initial type and platforms and so on. And and, and, and also an interesting how transform uh, and this is bringing some quite a lot of new possibilities to the any profession. But also uh, what we lose during this digitalization, for example, in our school, we see profession uh, architect as a social moderator, as an integrator. It would mean that you have to have uh, some kind of uh, quite often type of relations uh, which could be improve your your, your, your knowledge is your tools uh, to negotiate, to, to, to discuss. And, it is, and this is quite a difficult in such kind of uh, this um, uh, social media or digital time. And this, uh, it's it, 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 it is. In the other hand, we we need to 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 uh, find a possibility uh, how to uh, to bring to normal. I don't know our social life, and also it's, it's it has enormous input. How could degrade a public spaces and 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 all these schools? It's somehow this most important mission of any schools is to be to be a, a, some kind of public uh, place where uh, these uh, people interact and and, uh, and place of exchange of uh, knowledge and this is super important and maybe it's 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 move out to the our um, uh, direction how um, find ways for better protection uh, Maybe some new medical technologies which could help to 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 uh, to to keep us as a social or um, um, creatures. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Matthew. You had a point. Yeah, just commenting on what all the others have commented already is Concordia University of Edmonton um, has not had any online teaching whatsoever. It was all presential, right? So we have a university here in Athabasca in Alberta, which is completely online. But they are online university. That's different. So of course, when we went to from Friday to Monday, they, they the, the professors had to had to figure out the first steps. But in the meanwhile, we had brought on board um, specialists to to help develop the pedagogical and technological skills of the professors. So that is good. Another thing that Concordia um, uh, just uh, used the occasion to do is to establish a Concordia TV, uh, but not the TV in the sense that uh, I come from Brazil and uh, several universities in Brazil, they have their own TV channel that they use. And But uh, this is an online TV uh, and it's a platform like uh, to just to, to we have, uh, of course, uh, YouTube, but YouTube is mixed with many other things. Uh, this platform is, is exclusively for Concordia in, when you log in and it's like a Netflix. Uh, so, so what is happening is that the, 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 the departments are uploading videos of teaching, of classes, of, uh, of examples, of performances. And this is quite a, a very good uh, opportunity, I think, for, uh, for the university to, 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 to use the technology of, of the online TV. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Manfred. And um, so, gentlemen, we're almost uh, coming up at the end of the session. Um, like to just go around um, the room again and for all uh, all of you to kind of share your last concluding thoughts 
in terms of um, what are your thoughts regarding maybe new innovations or emerging um, future trends in education that may arise out of the age of COVID and or any other uh, concluding thoughts or comments you'd like to make um, for a global audience? If anyone want to uh, just start? Maybe, yes. maybe start and just may, maybe we'll just reply to what Oleg and, um, and Manfred said. One thing is actually the idea of having like these channels like Netflix sort of TV or like there are many, many channels like that. MOOCs is one of the most very popular channels nowadays where you have this, this transmission like talks with some assessments. That is one thing that will provide, it will pervade, it will, there will be many of them. And of course, not only like universities like ours, which is a small local university, but also MIT, Harvard, they will pro provide high quality information related to a lot of topics. And this is one thing which will be accepted more, which is important, interesting, and will maybe change the strategy of small universities not trying to, to compete against them because they don't have either the knowledge or the other thing. And the other thing which Oleg mentioned for his education, where he has to um, have uh, students and future architects which can communicate, which can negotiate, which can solve problems and using technology for that because it's a different in a digital and also in a in a, in a non-digital way, in a, in a real way. And this is one thing which actually where education can also jump in and actually our goals in education is not really like about information transmission, but like if you're, if you're familiar with the 21st century goals, it's like really about communication, collaboration, conflict resolution, problem solving and negotiation. So these are skills which should be really promoted and enhanced in the next steps of education, in our education, day by day, either we, we teach architecture or we teach economics or we teach basics uh, children at school, because these are the tasks, the skills, which enable them to go where, to do the job they're doing, and not only just architecture, but also other jobs, a lot, lot of other jobs as well. So that's where we should go and we should enhance our energy to go toward that. And of course, there is also a chance to, to set up and to use technology for that, but this is under uh, known nobody knows or a lot of people don't know how to use it. and i think if you go into teaching uh, professors teachers educators all responsible for for education we should go there and show them technologies and methods about concepts about how to do so thank you very much thank you michelle um anyone else want to go next concluding remarks um i just want to add that uh, this all these circumstances or so challenges uh, brought us a lot of new new tools and new technologies. And uh, this we pay a crazy price, but but uh, finally we we are uh, armed uh, much much better for uh, for education. It means how to. Um, uh, to do uh, this uh, battle with uh, these uh, new challenges, uh, but and keep your uh, your this uh, path uh, stronger. This is uh, quite important. Thank you, Oleg and uh, George, Daniele, and Manfred. Would you like to uh, just give a concluding remark? No, I just I just hope that uh, we take the opportunity and not not forget very quickly that this actually occurred. And it's interesting that most legislation that's coming out of countries is actually ignoring it and moving on further. And a part of that legislation, mind you, is very important, is that the accountability systems in a large number of countries based around simple knowledge. And it's showing that education services actually provide much wider than that. And it's been very, very clearly, as you've identified with the mental health issue, that schools actually provide a much bigger service. And as our previous speaker said, if we don't actually account for some of the other skills that we want people to and actually say that they're being successful, they don't really get embedded by the system when it comes to its accountability. So we do need to put a higher emphasis on teamwork, on collaboration, etc. These things that make the, the world work together rather than just focus on purely a knowledge-based system. You might say that's a very UK comment, but I do notice in other countries it's quite wide. And in fact, we have a, quite a narrow knowledge-based accountability system in the end, um, which needs to change. Thank you, George. And um, Michelle, uh, uh, Daniele and uh, Manfred, and last uh, concluding remarks. Well, uh, I think we must take the, the positive aspect of uh, the digital um, tools 
uh, education can uh, use these tools, must use these tools, can be can broaden uh, your reach uh, and uh, can be and sometimes can be very useful or necessary as in the COVID lockdown. And uh, but uh, you, as I said, and also Michele said before, you must uh, you must um, uh, manage well the the tool, the digital tools, and because uh, teaching in this new environment is different, uh, but um, can give you a lot of uh, uh, results and positive uh, outcomes. And, and, and at the, the end, you must also uh, be able to be inclusive with, uh, with uh, the digital, uh, the, given the digital divide. And then you need money from the government and from, uh, uh, to, to help you to do that. For my quick uh, remark, I, I agree with my colleagues here in the panel, but uh, I want to say about this conference, I, I really um, regret that the circumstances has prevented us again from being face-to-face -face in Kashkaish, and that we are here looking, staring at the computer. Uh, it was an honor to be with you, but I hope that we can resume uh, in person and then meet, meet and, uh, you know, fist bump and shake hands and, you know, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, and, yeah. Thank would you, you uh, be okay with just staying for one minute? Let's do a, like a selfie together, a groupie. Yeah. Uh, it's a groupie function. And I'm going to start one, two, three. Um, so you just have to click, take a photo, and automatically the system will send a groupie uh, to your email afterwards. And you can actually retake this as many times as you'd like until you get the perfect picture. And then you say, take, use this one. And then we'll, the, the group, you will use that um, perfect photo. Well, perfect is another word, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you yeah. very much, Jim, for, Thank for much, meeting so well. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much Thank for your you. chairmanship. And I'm sorry Thank I missed you. it. My little okay. house in France is in a valley which doesn't have good comms, and I had to come home especially for this, so mm -hmm. to make sure we could speak clearly. So I'm sorry All I missed good. it. All good. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for, for yeah, making yeah, very thank much, very much. the session and thank really, you, really great insights moderation. and perspectives. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. And I think we all thank you, everybody. And the groupie. Yeah. Yes. So we yeah. have the groupie, and uh, yeah. I'll stop streaming and uh, end the session. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.